Okay, we are live. Hello there, everybody. Sam's Trains here. Welcome back to the railway. I uh, hope you're all ready for some exciting restoration. I think this is the day, folks. I think we're finally going to get the thing running after all this. Um, although I probably shouldn't jinx it by saying that. Either way, hello. There's my very big hand filling the screen. That's a bit odd, actually. I won't do that in case it freaks anyone out. Hope you're all doing okay. Let's do some shout outs. I want to first of all say a huge, uh, well, shout out and a belated happy birthday to Liam, who was seven on the 30th of March. For obvious reasons, he couldn't have his party and that does sound a little bit sad. So I'm so sorry you missed out on that, Liam. Although no doubt after all this is over, you will be able to celebrate properly. I hope you had an amazing day. Apparently you're just getting started with DCC and you're gonna be trying that with your Flying Scotsman and some other engines. So. Hope you had a great day, Liam, and uh, thank you so much for your views and uh, support on the channel. I'm really glad you like it. So there we go. That was a shout out to Liam. How's everyone else doing? Hello, Sanderboom. Nice to see you. Let me just get my chat up and uh, be able to read it properly. Uh, oh, Mark's quoting Rick Astley, it seems. Ah, very, very interesting use of your time there, Mark. Lovely to see that. Uh, oh, yeah, no, he really is quoting Rick Astley. Ah, a hand says James. Yes, I know. I'm sorry about that hand. Although, if you don't like hands, this is probably not a very good stream to watch because um, there's going to be a lot of my hands in it. That sounded strange. Uh, let the restoration begin. Thank you very much, Trace Pierce. Doing great, friend. Oh, thank you very much. And H2, yes, you do. I have been looking at the H2s. I've been considering getting one. I do need to switch my speakers on because uh, then I will know when somebody has sent a super chat. Uh, although, you don't have to, folks. This is just uh, a bit of entertainment, to be honest. And I hope everyone's doing okay during this uh, difficult time. I hope the videos are providing some entertainment. And I'm going to try and do as many streams as I possibly can. Uh, I don't think I'll be doing one Thursday this week. But besides that, I will try and get something online every day for you. Okay, let's get to it then. So, for a bit of a recap, if you weren't watching the last servicing stream, I was working on this absolute beast of a model locomotive. I've called this in the title, what have I called it? The most complicated mechanism ever. Well, maybe it's not the most complicated ever, but it's easily the most complicated <laughs> I've ever seen. As you can see, we have two separate motor units, uh, which have sort of custom worm drives on them, which are really just wire. Every wheel is geared, as you can see. We have all wheel drive, all wheel pickup. It really is a complicated thing. We, all, we also have sort of diode control bulbs, that sort of thing. In the past, I have serviced one of the two bogies. I think it's this one, so this one is now working correctly. Today's job is going to be to do the same to this one to obviously make sure the thing is functioning. Uh, oh, Liam Roberts, thank you so much. He says, hi, Sam, love your videos. Thank you so much, Liam. I'm really glad you do. So, yeah, I'm going to be trying to fix this bogey. Fingers crossed it works as well as the other one did. And then I'm going to be taking all of the miscellaneous wiring off this and dis disconnecting this switch, which lets you switch between the third rail and the track, and uh, putting my own wiring in. Uh, for the time being, the bulbs are not going to be wired up, although one day I might put some LED directional lights in. Uh, but not today. Today's just going to be to get the loco functioning. So that's going to be the main job. Also, as I promised I would, I have cleaned the body. Uh, there we go. Looks like somebody's wiped their bottom on my towel there. Uh, yeah, not a nice mental image. Sorry about that. So yeah, I promised I would clean the body during the uh, well, hiatus between streams. And you, again, won't believe how different it looks. Look at this. Now this thing, I mean, you can check back if you like and look at the previous stream. This was absolutely filthy and it looked worse. It looked like a less detailed, less convincing model as a result. Uh, it's not perfect, some of the paint's not absolutely spot on, but I managed to get all these gubbins off the roof, all these separately fitted bits, I got them all off, and a miracle that I managed to get them back on again, but I did, and I gave the thing a proper clean. And so, in my opinion, that looks a, a lot better now, and I'm glad because, obviously, putting a lot of work in to uh, fixing the mechanism. Uh, it would be nice if it looked half decent when it was finished, so... Oh, I've been looking forward to this. It is absolutely incredible, this mechanism. I've never seen anything like it. I just hope it works. I hope it works. Uh, when you run out of toilet paper, use Sam's rag, says NJ. 
Bell Productions. Well, it does look like that has happened, yes, although I can assure you it hasn't. Although, who's going to believe that, I guess. Uh, okay, are you ready then? Gubbins, yes, that's one of my favourite words, Luke, I like, I like the word gubbins. Okay, so, I've already said that I'm going to be getting rid of the miscellaneous wiring here, so what I think I might do to start with is just desolder it all, get it all out of the way, because all it is doing is getting in my way. And I don't know what this thing is here. That must be, I think that must be a contact um, for the pantographs. No idea. I don't think I need it though, as long as it's not a piece of the pickups. So I've had the soldering iron warming up, so it shouldn't be a problem just to get these wires out of the way. So let's do that. I've also dug up a nice 200 meter spool of nice thin wire, uh, which I'm going to use. Uh, I'm not going to be colour coding it or anything like that, because these are so simple, uh, you won't get confused. Although, yeah, maybe I'll live to regret saying that, but we'll see. Right, let's desolder the bulbs then. And uh, I've never actually tried to see if these bulbs work, but it uh, doesn't really matter to be honest, because I, like I say, I'm just going to be putting LEDs in. Uh, we'll get this big block out of the way. The chassis didn't need this huge die cast block, uh, because it's already made of metal and it weighs an awful lot. Uh, but it has, it's got that, which uh, just adds to the weight of course. Uh, but we, we don't need it obviously right now, so I'll just budge that out of the way. And see if I can't get the other wire off this. Is it screwed on? You know, I think it might be, or it might be soldered on, we'll see. Let's just put some solder to it and see what happens. Yep, it was soldered, okay. Well, that's good, I haven't got to bother undoing that screw then, although I will when it comes to converting this to LED lights. Right, hmm, wires here are a little bit uh, more difficult to get off than they were on the other bogey. It's all that blue wire's trapped around the inductor there. Can I just pull that out, or should I perhaps not do that? Hmm, <laughs> yeah, that looks a bit neater than it did on the other side. How is that arranged? Oh, I... No, I don't see. Oh, yes, I do. Okay, so there's a red wire on top of the inductor. Yeah, I, it wasn't this neatly uh, arranged on the other bogey, was it? I just, I can't really remember doing it. I just sort of desoldered all the wires and it was dead easy. Got to be careful with this one, because obviously I don't want to melt the uh, motor housing, otherwise it would all be over rather quickly. Right. And I have got my uh, capacitors ready, so I might, uh, if these come off, the ones that are on it, and I think they did, I think the, yes it did, yeah, there's the one from the other bogey. I'm just going to put my own new ones in, because I don't know how capacitative they are anymore, so I'd rather just put new hardware in where possible. But we'll see. I'm not that bothered about conserving all the original parts when they're just capacitors. All right, are we off? Yep, yeah, red wire's off. Uh, let's see if I can't get that blue wire out then. Off the pickup. Yep, yeah, that's off. Right, now we've just got to get the pesky wires off that switch on the bottom, which I'm not going to be wiring up in future. Uh, now, how is that attached? Oh, it's just clipped on. I tell you what, I'm surprised. Most things are screwed on with about 15 screws on this model, but no, that's just clipped on, so I might be able to just get that off. I don't want to put solder to it in case I break it. Okay, well that came off easy. There we go, and there's the solder joints. So I can just undo those, hopefully, desolder them. Right, helping hand please. That's going to be useful. It's going to be a, a helping hand during this process. I don't think that was even a joke, was it? No, probably not. Okay. Ooh, solder's trapped under the helping hand. Okay. I'm gonna be glad when all these crusty old wires are out of the way, I can tell you. It's gonna mean that I can just get on with it. I should have done it to start with last time, but I was just uh, so impressed by the, the looks of the mechanism, I just couldn't resist getting started straight away. There we go. There we go. Oh, that was easy. They all came off quite easily. Okay, well, I might as well put the base piece back on so it at least looks quite original. Ah, oh, how satisfying is that? Just a tangled mess of wires, just pulling off all in one go. Ah, I like that, that's good. Right, well, they can go in the bin. <laughs> I don't want to bother with those. Good, well, it suddenly looks a lot less complicated now, doesn't it? Which is good. So, let's pop the base back on. Can't remember which way it went on, but it doesn't really matter. There we are, it's on. 
How's everyone doing in the chat? Are you ready for this? Are you ready for me to attempt the other bogey? Let's hope so. Uh, how are you, Sam, in this thought time? Uh, thank you, David. I'm, I'm fine, thank you. I hope you're okay in this thought time as well. It is quite a thought time, isn't it? You're uh, alone with your thoughts, I suppose. I don't know if that's what you meant to say, but <laughs> you're right. You are right. Right. I've still got some desoldering to do, I've noticed. One of these inductors is still soldered to the lower bogey, which has to come off if I'm going to release the motor, so that's all right. And there's an annoying little white wire, which did some of the lighting, I think, so that needs to go as well. Oh, and I've lost the inductor, drat. <laughs> Hang on, let me just tin, the, tin that up again and stick it back on, because uh, that can stay in place, and then I won't forget where it goes. I must say, it's quite impressive on the old inductors. There's four, two for each motor. It's not bad. I don't really know what difference they make. I've never tested. I suppose I could test it with and without them, but it just seems like a lot of work for not a very interesting experiment, doesn't it, really? Okay. And we can take that capacitor off. <laughs> I promise I will have finished getting all the gubbins off it as soon as possible. It's not just going to be the entire stream, uh, just me faffing around getting bits off it. <laughs> Although it's turning into that, isn't it? Right. Right, we can really start disassembling now. Honest. Yeah, that's it. Right, that capacitor can go out of the way. And let's, uh, I mean, hopefully, right, this should be a bit more straightforward because I now know how it all goes together and I know for example that this screw here should release the motor and I don't have to worry about the other two screws right now. Oh, I forgot how filthy this whole thing was. I'm going to have to clean it up properly. Oh, that screw needs to come right out. So this screw sandwiches the bogey and the motor onto the chassis. It's quite a, a weird little setup. Okay, oh, that was satisfying though. Look at that, the motor just came off in one piece. To say it's not had any oil, it's pretty uh, smooth running, is that? That's not bad. And the bogey, if I remove the pickup, which I should be able to do with that screw there, the bogey should come out as well. I think I'll, I'll do what I did last time and start off with the motor and see if, uh, see if we can get that resurrected. Because the motor's the only uncertain part, really. Um, provided that works, I'm fairly sure I can get the bogey to run properly. Yeah, it's very, it's absolutely caked. Look at the state of it. <laughs> Where has it been? Well, it's been in an attic. But to say it's that bad, it's quite free. So that's only going to get better as I, uh, you know, clean it up. And I'm going to try and keep this coupling as well. I remember not putting the other coupling back on. Um, so obviously it's going to need at least one coupling. And then I thought, you know, I'd, I'd rather just have one, in fact, because then it's more realistic. It's all badly bent because it was just thrown in that box. Did you enjoy the uh, video the other night, by the way, of the, well, last night, in fact, of me going through the goodies? I enjoyed doing it. I just hope it was um, not too dull to watch. But let me know if you enjoyed it. I hope you did. Right. Let's attempt this then. Let's see if I can't take this motor to bits and see if it works. I would power it up. My curiosity wants me to, but I'm not. I'm going to take it to bits and clean it up first because I don't want to do the thing in by powering it up. I'm sure it wouldn't, I'm sure it would be fine, but I don't want to risk anything. Right, so with the capacitor facing me, the weird wire brush goes on the right hand side, okay? Please remember that somebody, because I'm gonna forget. Oh, I've got both brushes out this time, that's good. Nice, shall we clean those to start with then? Oh, quite a few people saying yes. Sam Haslam enjoyed it. Matic uh, Krasan. Yes, good. Them vids are my favourite. Oh, good, good. Vids, I guess. Thanks, Luke. Glad you like that. George Botterini, good. Well, I mean, I can't promise how many of, of those I'm going to be able to make because uh, obviously it was quite a extenuating circumstance. But, uh, yeah, if anything like that happens in the future, I will be sure to film it. Um, it's good to know for future reference. Right, these brushes, man, absolutely filthy. Makes me wonder how much wear these brushes have been through, because they, they look pretty long. 
So that tells me that, I mean, if they were much longer, they wouldn't fit in the housing, right? Which means they can't have done that much running. But then why are they so filthy? Really filthy. But that motor, um, the motor on the other bogey that I did last time, ran beautifully. It really did run well. Uh, I don't know if anybody was there for that, but it, it did run well. So I wonder, I mean, it looks bad because it's been left in a loft for th literally at least 30 years. That, that assumes they were there since 1990. I think it was earlier than that. So it looks worse than it is. I wonder what sort of use this has had when it was first put up there. Because it, it's filthy and all that, but nothing's worn really, which is most unusual. But we'll see. I don't want to. I don't want to tempt fate by saying things like that because we're only halfway there. The rest might not work, as far as I know. So, yes, we shall see. We shall. Right. Now, did this go a specific way? I think it did. So I might try and make a mark on this. So the end with the capacitor is going to have the screwdriver mark. Because I noticed it didn't run, it didn't. Uh, the armature wasn't perfectly free uh, when I put it on the wrong way last time. I didn't think there was a right and a wrong way, but I think for polarity's sake, this bit's the magnet. Don't forget, it's probably important which way it goes on. But I am going to investigate the polarity properly um, before I go ahead and wire it up. Because obviously, if you <laughs> if you wire it up wrong, you'll have one bogey going one way and the other going another, and it'll sort of fight itself. It'll be like a tug of war. Be interesting to try that actually, but I wouldn't want to burn it out on its first run, obviously. Right, get these nice big screws out. Yeah, there's no way that this thing's uh, going to come apart by accident, is there? Right, let's see if we can do this then. Let's pull it apart, see if it comes out apart nice and easy. The last one didn't. I had to really struggle with the last one. Oh no, it's coming now. Right, there we go. So the rear bearing has come out. Oh, we've got two spaces on this one. Pretty sure the last one just had one, didn't it? Oh, well, it worked all right. We'll keep the two, obviously, but um, yeah, it just makes me worry that uh, there's something missing on the other one. But no, like I say, it ran fine, so I'm not worried. So I'll clean those up. They could have just been gummed together, I guess, but no, I did clean them and they didn't come apart, so. Fair enough. Right, we'll deal with the armature in a second then. Let's clean up the magnets and remagnetize them. I still can't believe that this whole assembly here is the magnet. It's quite impressive. I mean, the entire chassis of the motor is a magnet. I, I don't think I've seen that before. Sounds like a good idea though, doesn't it? Although I suppose, could it, could it be easy to break? I'm not sure, it depends what it's made out of. Are you repairing again, says Julian. I, I'm trying to. Well, I'll let you know the answer to that once it's actually running, because uh, I still don't know whether it's going to be a good runner or not. Um, last episode was very reassuring. I reckon I've got a good chance of sorting out this one. But, um, yeah, you never know until the fat lady sings, and the fat lady in this case is my Gage Master controller. And if it does sing, that probably means I've shorted it out. And so... It will certainly be over if that happens. I don't know, what am I rambling about? Just get it done, okay? Yeah, it's pretty dirty this, but it's coming clean now, I think. Keep going. And I think, did I recharge the last one? I think I did, didn't I? So I'll do the same with this. How is the magnet out of interest? It's actually not bad. It's holding on to the screwdriver pretty good. But uh, no, I'm going to make sure it's as good as it possibly can be. So, let's measure. So north is this way. Because don't forget my compass is backwards. <laughs> so south is the mark on this one. I made a mark on the south side. That's fine. Right, so I'm just jumping out of shot for a second while I remagnetize it. Okay. There we go. Push once. Push twice. Well, let's do it three times, or thrice. That's it. Right, how does that feel? 
Oh yeah, yeah, it's noticeably a bit better now. Although, like I say, the screwdriver was hanging off it before. But yeah, that's very good. That's more than strong enough, I would say. Excellent, let's move that out of the way. Now we've got the really filthy bit, the motor. Strangely enough, everything about it looks filthy except the commutator. It's actually quite shiny clean. <laughs> Tell me this isn't the one I've already done. No, I don't think it is. No, That's all right. Magnetics as Luke's locomotives. Yes. Right, let's do it. Try not to break off those uh, inductors as well. That wouldn't be very good. I'm not actually cleaning the commutator first. I'm just trying to clean the housing to start with. Oh my God, look at the state of that. How has this gotten so dirty? I mean, all right, it's been in a loft, but the motor hasn't been exposed to the elements. I want to know how much current um, this thing's actually gonna draw. Some people have frightened me and said it was gonna need an amp. An amp? That's 500 milliamps a piece. That's more or less double what a trying loco would pull. Yeah, I hope it ain't gonna be an amp. You never know. I've never had a model barn before, so we'll see. One thing I would say, though, is that the power supply I tested it on uh, last time was limited to 300 milliamps. So if it did want half an amp, I don't think it would have started on that. So, yeah, hopefully, at, at the most, it should be drawing about 600 milliamps. And the gauge masters can do an amp, don't get me wrong. It's just that, that amount of current frightens me running through a single loco. <laughs> It's like uh, kind of insane, isn't it, that? But we will see. We will see. I'm told these are very powerful models. Thank you, by the way, for everyone that uh, gave me some information on this and the other models. Um, the consensus seems to be that the Jubilee was a case kit, I think. Uh, I'm still not sure whether I'm going to proceed with the Jubilee or not. Uh, the thing is, it's very underpowered um, to the point where I'm not sure it will shift itself with the body on because uh, the motor's faulty. And some people have told me that those motors are not good motors, even when they're working properly. And the fact that mine's had a bit of a botch fix uh, doesn't fill me with much hope on that. So we'll see. I don't know if I'll just sell it or what at this point. But uh, I certainly had fun with it. I certainly had fun. And I might well try it a bit more, see if I can sort it out. But yeah, it's probably not going to happen. I found a better project. I like this one a lot more. Because it's a lot less down to chance. I mean, it's, it's a bit less of a challenge, this one. I mean, it still is a challenge, but I mean, it's not, it's not, can I botch fix it? It's, you know, can I fix it the proper way? And I think yes is the answer, I'm hoping. Right, let's try and clean this shaft a little bit. Ugh. I didn't notice the other one had a dirty shaft. This one seems <laughs> quite dirty. Don't even go there, Mark. I know, I know. And if you didn't see the last episode, yes, the worm drives are made of wire, which appears to just be coiled around the shaft. <laughs> it's crazy. I'd love to know, I would, must they have had a jig to get it right? Because obviously the spacing had to be pretty accurate, I would imagine. Would they have a machine to do it? So many questions. If anybody knows, let me know. I'd love to find out how these were made. Can you imagine if they had to do that these days in China, winding wire around shafts to make worm drives? Whew, I dread to think what the prices would be like. Right. So that looks like it's about ready to go back together, I'd say. Let's see if I can't get some a little bit of oil to the shaft. I want to be careful uh, because obviously the, arm, the commutator end doesn't need too much oil. But it's such a big shaft, it's going to... <laughs> It's going to need quite some lubricating, I'd imagine. Now that seems to be done. Good. Okay. The magnet. Trace Pierce. Settle a bet. Kelly Clarkson. Clarkson or Shania Twain. Uh, what do you mean? <laughs> Who do I like more? Or are we asking sinister questions? I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of either, to be honest. I guess I'd rather watch Clarkson, obviously and some singing woman. Yeah, I couldn't actually tell you any of her songs. Right, I think this is as clean as I can reasonably get it, so let's see if I can't do this. 
So I'm lining up the marked end with the capacitor. So this way I know I've got the polarity right, at least where the magnet is concerned. Still got to wire it up right, of course. Pop. OK. Oh, I didn't put the spaces in. Drat. Take it off again. <laughs> uh, I knew that was going to happen. Right. Are they going to play ball this time? Because last time the magnet started pulling them back off again. No, I've got it in. <laughs> Good. Right. There we are. It's a bit freer now. Good. Right, let's see how free I can make it. Let's get some lubricant on the back end. Oh yeah, that's getting there. Good, so we've got two freely spinning armatures now, which is good. And it's getting better and better, that. How about a bit more on this end? That's it. I can't imagine these being puny little motors that would mind about getting a bit of oil on the commutator, but I'm trying to be careful, trying to be careful. Yeah, that's nice. It's nice and free now. Right, let's put the screws back on it then. Uh, I'll trust that it's going to work. If not, I'll have to take them back out again. But uh, yeah, to be honest, the screws are almost completely unnecessary because it's so difficult to get those two pieces apart. I can't imagine it coming loose on its own, but obviously I'm not just going to take screws out for the sake of it. That would make no sense. There we are. Get this one threaded properly. That's it. And they are a bit of a, a pain to tighten up. So I'll do the rest with the big screwdriver. Good. Right. Excellent. Let's have a go then. Uh, have we got, uh, yeah, I know, I'm sorry, I, I've been making innuendos now. I did ask that people didn't make them just because I know there are young people or possibly old people or, I guess, sensitive people watching. So I don't want to upset anybody with that sort of thing. <laughs> and then I've gone and done a load of my own, but most of them were accidental. But yeah, we're trying. We're going to try and keep it um, friendly in the chat <laughs> from now on, if you don't mind. Okay. And the brushes will go back, and then I'll do what I did last time and put a little power to it. See if the thing's actually going to run. I hope so. If it just does nothing, I'll be uh, stuck. Yeah, that's that brush. The brushes didn't actually go down into position properly last time, so I'm hoping this time they will. And then we've got that real puzzle of a bogey to take apart again. I'm not looking forward to that, but at least I've done it once now. Right. Okay, so I can see the brushes moving as I'm shifting the armature about, so that's good. So I'm confident the brushes are making contact now, so here goes. Let's do a little bit of a test here. Go on then, folks, cross your fingers. Is it going to work? I hope so. Okay. Can it start itself? It can. There we go. Let's see if we can spin it up. Let it sort itself out on that voltage. We're at uh, 6 volts. Let's ram it up then. Oh, it's good sound on this. 10 volts and 12 volts. There we go. Wonder what sort of current this is drawing. Yeah, it's not bad. Normally, if I ramp it straight up to 12, oh, it's struggling there. Um, the voltage will slowly rise because obviously it's pulling a lot more current to accelerate the armature. Uh, no, that wasn't happening really with this. Oof, ow. Oh yeah, I forgot. <laughs> it's, just, it's quite a sharp end to that to bit of wire there. Well, that's just uh, cut into my finger. Lovely, thank you for that. No, that's fine, that's fine. That looks, that looks promising, I think, doesn't it? So that motor can go to one side. We'll come back to that shortly. How's everyone doing? Everyone doing okay? Toodles, Owen. Oh, okay. See you, Owen, if you're off. No problem. Yippee, says people. Woo, says Oscar van der Bargert. Sorry, Oscar. You'll have to let me know how to pronounce your name, Oscar. I keep, uh, I hash that one up too often, I reckon. 
Uh, Nicholas Cassar, hello to you. It sounds like an electric razor or tattoo gun. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> it sounds badass, doesn't it? That's for sure. Right. Well, sort of. I'm not sure. I have heard more badass things, such as weapons and that, I guess. But you know what I mean. So, ooh, I've got nasty stuff on my toothbrush, which is a bit of a worry. Right, let's do the bogey frame then, because that's pretty straightforward. Just do what I did last time and scrub it with the toothbrush. It's mainly just big bits of debris with this, so that can clean up and then go to dry. But of course, the great thing about using IPA is that it dries in seconds, so you haven't really got to wait, but I'll clean it up anyway. This is a purely cosmetic piece, of course, but you want it clean if you can. Okay, looking good. Let's put that somewhere where it won't cause any damage. And how did this piece... Oh, yeah, I remember. Uh, oh yes, I need the nut spinner for this then, don't I? Let's take out this nut. And we'll take the gears out. Now, a weird phenomena occurred when I cleaned the other gear. Oh gosh, the gear's stuck inside the <laughs> nut spinner now. <laughs> I guess I could leave it there until I'm ready to put it back on, but I don't want to do that. Come on, out you get. Oh no, well I guess we are leaving it in there then. How irritating is that? Right, I'll just have to remember it's in there. And hopefully I won't have to remove any more nuts. I guess I could, yeah, I'm going to take it out now I think. So let's thread it back on. And then pull it out. If possible. This is a tedious little problem to have, isn't it? Hang on, let's pull the gear out first. There we are. Ugh. So yeah, the gear, as I was cleaning it, it turned in front of my very eyes into like a fluorescent green. So we'll see if this one does it as well. If any chemists are out there, you'll be able to tell me what reaction it is. I add alcohol to it. Right, I'm just trying to thread this screw onto the nut. There we are, I've got it. Yeah, I've, I've had nightmares about getting uh, components stuck inside other components <laughs> since I lost that brush inside the brush housing. But you learn from your mistakes, so I won't be doing that again. He says, having just done the same thing with a nut, but yeah, I'll try not to do the same thing again. Let's clean up this. This screw doubles as a shaft for the gears, so it does have to be clean. I discovered last time. It's not that bad, though. Okay, let's see if we get the weird effervescence, well, not effervescence, fluorescence, I guess. Right, so look, it's very much not green right now. It's like a, a dull yellow, if anything. I'll grab the toothbrush and give it a scrub, see if it changes colour again. I'll have to put the lights off, see if they glow in the dark. <laughs> right, ready? Is it going to do it? Sort of. Keep going. It's weird. I hope it isn't ruining the gear doing this, but the other one hasn't cracked or anything yet. <laughs> I've been coming to check it because it worried me a bit. But uh, yeah, maybe it's just uh, like that scene in Indiana Jones where it's finally in contact with fresh air again and it just doesn't agree with it. I don't know. Yeah, no, the other one has a real green tinge to it, and this one doesn't. Can you see the difference? How very odd. It definitely did that before I put the lubricant on it. Maybe it will uh, worsen. We'll keep an eye on it. Right. Let's get this bogey clean then. Ugh, there's some gunge stuck over one of the gears. Yeah, you can see that. Goodness knows what that is. Not that interested in touching it, I'll be honest. Uh, could I get the Jubilee for my birthday, says Peter Davenport. <laughs> I don't know about that. I don't know if I'm ready to get rid of it right now. When is your birthday, though? I hope you have a good day, whenever it is. Ugh, look at that. The gears shouldn't even be dirty. I don't understand how they would get so dirty. But they certainly are. It's 
should be using the toothbrush really i think that's a better tool for this particular job uh thank you for the support though folks and peter really appreciate that and you trace uh, i saw you sent quite a few it's very kind there we go they're looking a bit better and i did uh it was really satisfying last time cleaning the wheels as well most satisfying was that so we'll do that I listened back, by the way, to the well, part of the recording. I can't watch myself for two hours, but I listened to the part where I cleaned the wheels, and the Dremel sound isn't that bad. I expected it to be absolutely sort of eardrum shatteringly deafening, but it wasn't that bad, so I won't be too worried about doing that in the future. Right, the centre of the wheels have a strange sort of pus deposited onto them, which is unpleasant. So we'll see if I can get that out. Oh, some's gone in my eye, excellent. I look forward to losing my vision thanks to that one day. There we are. That's better. The other side looks clean, but we'll do it. And then it's done. Good. Ugh. Nasty. Right. I think we're there. I think we're there. Let's go ahead and take this apart then using the final two screws. And I also want to pay attention to how the coupling piece fits in because it, I think it just kind of dropped out on the other one and I didn't even notice. But uh, like I say, I want at least one, one coupling on it so that I can couple to some coaches or something when it's done. Oops. Oh, careful. Oh, blimey. No, I'm going to ruin that screw if I'm not careful. <laughs> Everyone's cringing. That's all right. Right. Is that going to come apart now? No, I think we actually need to get the screws out then. Yeah, no, I can feel it clicking, so it's at the end of its thread. Yeah, I got it. Okay, other one. Right, let's see if everything's still inside it. We should have some a pickup piece in there, if it's correct. If not, I'll have to make one. I don't know how it would possibly have escaped. It's just nothing would surprise me anymore when it comes to this one. Come on, off you get. There we go. Right, so the coupling, it seems, just was sandwiched in there, wasn't it? Which side? This side, I'm guessing. Yeah, it just sort of sits in like that. Yeah, okay. Well, that's fine. Right, don't let me forget. We do have the pickup piece in there, which sits down and touches a hole in... Well, it goes through a hole in the chassis and touches the axles. So that's fine, I'll need to clean that. The last one cleaned up quite nicely, so I'm not uh, worried about using power tools on it or anything. But yeah, nothing. I mean, these pickups, they're completely free of all wear. The loco, the amount of dirt on it suggests that it's been used for hours and hours and hours, but the amount of wear makes it look like it's only been run in, you know. It's really odd. I suppose that's just what time could do. This one looks a bit messy, actually. Can't get the black marks off it. It'll probably conduct just fine, but I might just get the Dremel on that. Just have to be careful, because the Dremel could tear it up. We'll see. All right, how are these looking? Well, I haven't lubricated them yet, but they are running free, which is good. So that's reassuring. Let's get rid of some of these old cotton buds. Clean that contact area on the axles, make sure that's good and clean. There we are. Yeah, it's nice and free. In fact, I've uh, temporarily lubricated it now with IPA and it's uh, running really nice and free. So that's good. It's getting stuck at one point. I think that might be just my fingers touching it. Yeah, it's doing several rotations, so we're okay, I think. Right, good. The one thing I wish I had done with the last one was taken this uh, retainer off and actually gone and took the gears out and cleaned them. But, uh, yeah, it just, it just seems free enough not to need that. I can see the gear on the wheels is still a bit dirty, though, so let's see if I can get some of that debris off. I thought I'd done this well enough, but obviously not. I don't think I even bothered cleaning the wheels with cotton buds last time. I think I just I went straight for the Dremel because they looked so bad. 
Yeah, they are pretty bad, to be fair. I don't know what they're made of. I don't. I wouldn't say they're rusty. They're just filthy. Which, again, I mean, I would have said a lot of running would be required to get them as bad as that. But, um, yeah, it doesn't appear that, they, that they've done all that much. Right, how's that? Just making sure all the debris is gone. I think so. Right, how's the upper chassis? Not bad. It's pretty clear. It's about the only clean piece I've seen on the whole thing. <laughs> Hi Sam, do you recommend the Batman DC controller? Thank you very much, D9019. Uh, yeah, they're okay. Um, I think I would recommend others. Uh, check my controller video if you want to find out what the best controllers are. Although it doesn't include my overview of the Gage Master Combi controllers. Uh, is it mine, the model D model or something like that? They're really good. I highly recommend those. And Peter Davenport. Uh, oh, 20, 22nd of April. Ah, oh, very nice. Well, I hope you have a good birthday, Peter, when, um, whatever you decide to do. I'm sorry that it's falling during this un unfortunate time, but I guess we can make the best of these things. Not got much choice. Okay, what shall I do then? I think I might have saved the wheel cleaning until the chassis was back together because uh, I can support it better. I'm still seeing bits of fluff stuck to the gears. I'm, I'm guessing it's probably just coming off my towel. <laughs> it's probably time for a clean. Yeah. Unless there is some stuff wrapped around the shafts, but I'm not seeing anything. Right. I have to be careful then not to let any of this stuff touch the dirty towel. Oh, the towel's not that bad. Yeah, I don't know where that's coming from. Keeps producing itself though. Right, let's oil it up then. Let's get some oil in here. It's the only way I can actually get oil to the actual uh, axles. And we'll use some silicon grease again. Where's my silicon? Yeah, put that on the actual gears themselves. The good thing is they all, all the gears are connected. So you oil one gear and every one, barring the one, or barring the work drive on the motor, will be oiled or lubricated, which is really good. Okay, I'll just turn those by hand then. The reason I'm doing the lubrication now is because the Dremel turns the wheels at quite some speed, and obviously you want them to be lubricated for that, otherwise it will make a big mess. <laughs> it could ruin the, the gears, I guess. But yeah, that's, uh, that's freeing up nicely. That's very good. To say there's one, two, three, four, five gears being turned by this, it's actually really nice and free. Look at that, lovely. That feels even better than the other one. Okay, good, good. Ooh, who was that? Try not to put it on the dirty bit for now. Uh, Michael's Trains, thank you very much. Uh, have you done your research on Alfred and Judy? Uh, no, not much. I couldn't tell you much about Alfred and Judy. Uh, any fun facts to share? You're welcome to. <laughs> Oops. But thank you very much. I appreciate that. And it was Peter Davenport again. Can you do a Thomas and Friends crash compilation, please, for my birthday? Um, unfortunately, they're a bit too expensive to crash, uh, so I'm not going to be able to oblige you there. But um, either way, hopefully your birthday won't be shattered without that. <laughs> yes, I don't fancy crashing my engines. And they're quite fragile too, so they probably wouldn't survive it all that well. Right, so the pickup piece is in and it just contacts the bottom part of this chassis, of course, which pushes it down onto the axles. And then you, uh, well, there's that screw, which has a tab on it. And that's what you solder to for the connection. So just line up the peg, squish it into place. It's a bit of a dodgy bit, this, because you don't know if the pickup piece has been pushed out of the way or not. Uh, I don't think so, though. Oh, and the uh, coupling as well. The coupling must go here. Nearly forgot. Oh, damn. That's another thing I've got to hold in place while I lower this in then. So I'm guessing it just sits on there like that. Let me straighten it first. I'm sure I did straighten this. It's all bent again. Unless, oh, there's another one. Okay. <laughs> That's the other one. Let me just straighten it in the vise properly. Silly me. Okay. Hopefully it actually is supposed to be straight, but I'm not bothered. 
We'll fix it if not. Nope. Pick up went out of the way. Move that hair out of the way. Yeah, there's little bits of fluff on it. I don't know where they're from. Right. Well, I'm hoping it's going to be surgically clean now. Right. In fact, I can get the peg in place, and then before I shove it down, I can put the coupling in. I think that's the best option. It's a bit awkward, this. It's a very good fit, which is good, but you have to get it in the exact right position. Right, I think we're there. Sandwich the coupling. Okay, and then the screws should hold it in place. And then I'll check that we've actually got continuity with the correct axles, or with the wheels rather. And then I'll know that the pickup plate is actually in place. Hopefully, the other one was, so hopefully it won't be an issue. We shall see. Right. Okay, wheel set's nice and free, jolly good. Right, flip it over. Let's grab the Lego brick again. Need to get it just so that the uh, wheels aren't being obstructed. Okay, let's give it some power. Just make sure we are actually live with the chassis. Let me touch one of these screws. Yep, yeah, okay, we're good. Right, let's do the wheels then. Crash the tango, please, and shout out for MDH. Oh, there we go, where's MDH? We'll give you a shout out. Thank you again, Peter. And um, I don't know, I don't know about crashing the tango. It certainly deserves it, that's for sure, but I'm not sure I'd want to do that. Not a working model. I run it in a swimming pool, but uh, no, nah, I wouldn't rush it. <laughs> it, feels, it feels like that would be ending its life too easily, and it doesn't deserve that, in my opinion. Right. Since we've got the coupling on this one, we can probably just grab it with the helping hand. Yeah, it just worries me using the Dremel when some parts aren't being held in place because it can grab things and chuck them across the room and hit you in the face and that sort of thing. Yeah, the dangerous things if you're not careful. Right, I think that's pretty... Well, it's stable enough for me anyway. So I'll find my goggles because I'm not that confident. <laughs> I don't want to lose an eye to this model. Although there's a fair, fairly strong chance of that happening, isn't there? Right. That's not Lego, says Caden Rowe. Yeah, was it, is it Mega Blocks or something? Yeah, somebody was saying that. Well spotted, how very pedantic. <laughs> I, can't, I wouldn't be able to tell the difference. I was always a Kinex man rather than a, a Lego man. I don't know why I say man, boy, I guess. In my younger days. Right, here we go. Let's do the filthy one first. Good. Yeah, that's clean. Oh, don't want to nip the gears. Okay, last one. Yeah, struggling to get access to the last one. Helping hands a bit in the way. Right, try again. Yes, I almost had one of the gears there. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to touch a plastic gear with a, a, a wire wheel like that because uh, it will probably consume it. That wouldn't be good. Right, well, they're looking really good and clean now. Oh, who was that? Thank you. Oh, Kelly Ashford, thank you very much. She says, how's it going? Uh, it's going well, I think. Thank you. Uh, check back in a few minutes and we'll see because uh, I'm almost ready to reassemble this now. All right, uh, there's no sign of my lubrication that I put on the uh, on the gears. 
don't know where that's all gone. Probably needs a bit more because it's uh, seizing up a bit, actually. It's, well, it's not seizing up, but it's uh, not so easy to turn as it was. But man, those wheels look good and clean. Yeah, this is going to be good as new, I'm hoping. Yes, it's very awkward to turn the wheels because there's a gear under wherever you put your finger. <laughs> so you, you've really got to be careful. And every time you touch a gear and the thing seizes up, you think, oh no, it's seized up. And then you realise you're just touching it in the wrong place. It shouldn't be a problem once it's all together, of course. There we are. Good. Oh, look at that. After all that dremeling, still filthy. Let's give it one more round, just so that I know that they're clean. This one looks like it could do with a bit more, actually. But we'll leave it for now. Good. I've thoroughly enjoyed this one. I, I can't remember enjoying servicing a particular model more than this one. I mean, it's ridiculous. We're probably into, what do you reckon, at least the second hour of this total now, probably more. But obviously that's just because it's so filthy. If I was just doing this another year down the line, it probably wouldn't take that long. But uh, yeah, it's not been easy or quick. But that's kind of what you want. You don't always want it to be over before you've, before you've got into it. There we go. It's nice and free again. Right, so, are there any other parts that I haven't cleaned yet? I don't think so. So, I should be able to start putting this thing back together, which frightens me, because uh, this is the moment of truth, so to speak. Uh, Kevin Warren, thanks for keeping us entertained. Well done. Oh, that's a pleasure. Pleasure. I hope you enjoy this. Right, get a drink of water, of course. bit too much water in fact <laughs> that's it okay I think we're ready by the way um, the warm weather has caused an extra problem for me up here in the loft because the photos on the wall of fame have uh, started to take flight let's say <laughs> every morning I come up and there's uh, probably 10 a day on the floor <laughs> so yes that was uh, another funny frustrating thing that's been going on it always happens in spring funnily enough uh, just when the weather starts to get warmer, once it's in the heat of summer, they all seem to stay put again. It seems to be more the sort of change in temperature that does it, which is interesting. Ah, who am I kidding? No, it's not interesting. I found it interesting. And goodness knows why I've started telling you. But um, yeah, there it is. That's the fact, the fun fact of the day. If anybody actually cares. Right. The chassis doesn't actually play any part in the mechanism, I'm just cleaning it because I, I like it to be clean. Right, let's think about this then. What order do I want to reassemble all of this stuff in? I think it doesn't matter too much, right? How does this piece go on again? Oh yes, I remember. So that goes between the chassis and the motor. I just can't remember if there's something else I was supposed to do. I don't think so, was there? I need to sort the pickup out, but I'll do that in a minute. So that goes on there like that. Oh, yes, I need to put the gear in. That's it. That's what I forgot. Uh, yeah, that can go on afterwards, can't it? So the gear sits on there like that. And they're all sorted and ready to go. So the screw goes through the gear, which hasn't turned green yet. <laughs> so we've got one weird cursed gear and one that's not. Yep, no idea. So that goes through like that. It's got to be in situ because it won't go in if the uh, if the screw's already going through it. Struggling to find the hole. Come on. This is awkward. I seem to remember doing the other one straight away. There we go. Okay, and the tab because I want to solder the wire to this eventually. So we'll do that. Put that pesky uh, nut on that got stuck inside the tool a minute ago. There we go. Ah, this is a bit fiddly now. 
Right, there we go, it's on. Just tighten this up. I tightened the other one quite a lot. It didn't seem to seize the gears up, so I don't know what went on with that. Oh, Kelly, could you make a video of your Lego bricks? Um, I, <laughs> I don't know what I would make a video about. Um, they're just Lego bricks, and a lot of people have seen them. You mean actually building something? Maybe. Like I say, though, I was never much of a Lego person. I always built connects. I used to love connects. As you probably know from the roller coaster videos. Yeah, I just loved the size of them. <laughs> the scale. Peter again, thank you so much. Could you maybe do another Thomas story and add me as a character, please? Ooh, that sounds interesting. Again, I don't know about that because they take so long. I'm probably only going to be doing those at Christmas now, but we'll see. We'll see. Okay. Well, that's nice and freely running. I'm happy with that. That looks good. How easy is it to turn with the other gear? Oh, very. Good. Well, that's good. That's that's reassuring. That's very reassuring. So now I believe I can start putting it back together if I can remember what order all the pieces go in. I think that's correct. That sits on top. And then the motor. Oh, uh, yeah, this is the difficult part, isn't it? The motor need to figure out what the bottom part is I would think is it that way or the other way oh yeah that's right there's only one sh screw thread isn't there so it can only be that way yeah uh, so you've got to try and keep the motor there while you get the screw in underneath and that holds it all together but if you let go the bogey or the bogey cover or the motor or all three can come off so the screws in just got to find the hole on the bottom of the motor. Then I'll start tightening it just to get it threaded. And then I'll make sure everything's in position before I tighten it up. Are we on? Nope, not on. <laughs> oh, this is frustrating. Sorry if my face is getting in the shot, by the way. I'm trying not to cover it up for you. Hmm, this is a bit of a, a pain actually. I'll try again. No, I don't think we're lined up right yet. There's really not much screw to play with. As you can see, that's all that's poking through. And there's nothing really to hold it in place. Just going to have to keep going for it, I think. Just keep trying. Let's turn it around a little. There we are. Might be a bit easier that way. Oh, in fact, do I need to put the... I think I'm going to put the pickup on as well before I do this. That's a good point. And at least then the pickup piece will hold the uh, plastic shell of the bogey on. Yeah, I shouldn't forget that. How's the O gauge coming along, says Mark. Thank you very much, Mark7188. It's coming along well. I'm expecting to have some more track delivered for it today. And then as soon as I've got that, I'm hoping to film another O gauge review, which should be fun. But yeah, it's, it's going well. I've put all the other shelves up, so then we've now got track going across two walls of the room, which is quite good. So I've got more or less double the amount of track, and I'm also building a, a mini yard at the other end, so there's a set of points, which leads to two sidings, um, just to give some more shunting opportunities, you know. So yeah, it's going good, thank you. Thank you for asking. Now, which set of wheels does this have to go on? It's these, isn't it? But where's the... Where do they screw on? Am I just being confused? <laughs> I'm sure it had to... How does it go on the other side? Yeah, it's under the front of the motor. <laughs> so does it go on these wheels? Oh, of course, yeah. Oh, what am I thinking? Yeah. I was getting it mixed up with the other pickup. No. It is these wheels. Got confused there. Who was that? Oh, Kelly Ashford. I'm asking because I like playing with Lego myself. You're so clever. Show me what you used to make with them. Uh, I didn't really used to make a lot with them, Kelly, to be honest. I it was probably just little houses and things. I only played with Lego when I was really young. Um, perhaps when I got to, I don't know, maybe five or six, I, I was bought a Kinect set, uh, one of the early roller coaster sets. And uh, yeah, then I was taken with that, unfortunately. 
So I don't really remember much about my days playing with Lego. Not much. Right. Okay. Come on, Sam. Let's not make a hash of this. <laughs> Let's get this together now. So that goes on like that. Oh, no. Hang on. The pickup has to go on top of the chassis, doesn't it? <laughs> this is very much trial and error. Right. Ah, so this will make the motor part a little bit easier to do, I think. That's it. So this might hold it onto the chassis a bit while I fiddle with the motor. Let's see. Ooh, a lot of donations. Thank you very much today. Um, could you do a review on the O-Gage Thomas? I'd love to, Peter, but are they... Maybe other people know this better than I do, but aren't they three rail? If they are, I won't be able to, because my O-Gage is only two rail, unfortunately. Well, it's not unfortunate. I like I like the two rail stuff, but obviously it's not much help if you if you decide you want three rail stuff to run. Right, come on now. I'm tired of messing around with this. Let's get this screw through and let's get the motor stuck on. Right. Come on. I've got a good feeling about it this time. Please go in. No, nope, the good feeling was not justified. <laughs> this is really awkward. I didn't, I didn't struggle with this at all last time, I don't think, did I? Trouble is, it's hard to get it in place and then oh. ho hold it still while you screw it in. It's really awkward. Oh, I've got it. I think I've got it. Let's have a look. Party pooper. You're never too old for Lego. Yeah, no, I agree with that. I don't disagree with you there. <laughs> it's just I, I personally... Uh, didn't use it as much as I use connects. That's all there is to it. No offence to any Lego enthusiasts. And I've got great admiration, by the way, for certain people. Um, I don't know if you know Jack from Hattons. He's quite a, a Lego buff. He builds some awesome kits with Lego. Right. Well, the armature's free. And it is turning the wheel set, which is good. So let's put some oil on that and get power to it. Plenty of oil, because it is. <laughs> can't imagine it being a particularly efficient worm drive, although the other one did seem to be good. And let's put some power to it and see if it ran, we'll see if it runs. Future tense. As well as the other one did. And if it does, we can press on and I can go ahead and try and wire this up, which I expect I will mess up, but we'll see. Right. I'm holding this in the optimum position, I think so. Right, give it some juice. Go on. Hmm. Oh no, we got it. Is it me or is that one not dreadfully happy? Oh no, it is. It might just need a bit of running in, I suppose. Can it start itself? Oh yeah, it can now. Oh, that's good. Oh yeah, there's plenty of power there. Yes, it had a bit of trouble getting started, but I think we're okay. Oh good, that's nice. Can it go slow? It smells nice. It smells like baby wipes, which is a bit strange. Mmm. Yeah, my power supply is having trouble starting it. I can see it's get, it's struggling to get over 3 volts when it's not started. But if I get it in the right spot, yeah, it can start. Yeah, look at that. That's great. Let's compare that to the other side then. See if they're nicely balanced. And then I'm going to wire them up. I'm going to wire them, hopefully, so that all the pickups are common together. Uh, and then I'll just have to get the direction of the motors so that they're both going the same direction. Uh, so hopefully it will be good and reliable, the way I'm going to wire it. Yes. It's got a different sound, isn't that strange? Sounds different to the other side. I'll just hope they run at the same speed, because sometimes motors do run at different speeds, don't they? Just naturally. It's bizarre, isn't it, that? Go on. Yes. Well, it's fine. It's it's running at what appears to be the same speed. Bit of oil on the back again. Yeah. 
That's not bad. Not bad at all. Good. Right. Shall we have a go at this wiring malarkey then? See if I can get that done. Yeah, I'm happy with that. They're working. Good. So. Let's have a look here. So, I'm going to make some leads up. I'm going to wonder whether I should worry about the polarity right now and just get it going and just swap them later on if it turns out they're going backwards because I'm going to have all on just to make sure that the, they're both going the same direction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make up some leads which, yeah, I'm going to make up some double leads so that it's going to be one wire going from bogey to bogey and then another wire coming off each which goes to the motor and then the same for the other pickup. So that should be easy enough to do. Let's grab some wire, let's grab a drink, and let's give this a try. This is the final stretch. I'm hoping this is going to work. Um, we have, the capacitors are still on there, so I might add some more, I might not, we'll see. They're up there, out of the way. Okay, so let's grab some wire. This is new wire, where was this bought from? This came from my uh, my uncle's house when we went to clear it out. I found some. Uh, I just thought, you know, this the gauge of this wire looks perfect for model railways. Let me show you. In fact, I can tell you what gauge it is. Point uh, one millimeters. Wow, really? I wouldn't have said it was that small. No, it can't be point one millimeters. Yeah, zero point one millimeters. Ten slash zero point one millimeters. Well, it ain't 10 millimetres, is it? <laughs> I don't know. It, could, it might not be on the right spool. Anyway. Oh, yeah. That's really good wire, actually. That's really the right sort of thing. Uh, although the start has got some nasty kinks in it, so I'm going to cut those off just in case. And then we'll uh, give this a bit of a go. I don't know where my snips are, so we'll just use the pliers. Although, I perhaps do need the, the snips. Right, so how long do we need? I'm gonna be, I'm gonna give it a bit extra, give it exactly what I need. Right, just grabbing the snips and the pliers. Yeah, give it a little bit extra, because I'm gonna be stripping the ends back. Right, let's grab the strippers. <laughs> Try not to make the, uh, the jokes that I made on the April Fool's video. Right, let's set this roughly to the right size. This is the, uh, the wire stripper which you might have seen me use before, I can't remember. Okay, let's take the ends off. I'm going to twine these together and solder them before I put them on. So I'm going to leave us plenty of, plenty of uh, wire. So I can twist them together. There we go, is that still right? Yeah, that's a good, that's a good length, okay. So that's the one that's going between the two bogies. You want some length on that so that the bogies can turn. But equally, if you go too much, you'll uh, restrict the movement of the bogies, which obviously isn't very good. Uh, right, so I can now cut some shorter lengths. And I don't, at this point, know which side of the motor I'm going for, so I'm going to make sure they're not too short. OK, about that length. And we'll duplicate that. Let me just cut off this kink here. Some nasty twists in it, just where the start of the spool was. Cut that to roughly the same length. All right, there we go. And now, and as I say, I'm not wiring up the lights. Uh, I'm going to add my own LED system at some point, but that ain't going to be for today. That's going to be once I know the thing's working. So it will be without light to start with. I just want a tiny bit coming off one end. Yep, that's fine. And then a bit extra on this end. Yeah, that should be okay. Same thing with the other. It's going to annoy some people that I'm not colour coding them, but it's simple enough. And I don't know what colours I would use anyway, because at this point I don't know 
what the polarity needs to be. I think I'll just wire one up anyway. I'll just pick whatever's uh, most convenient and then I'll just match the other bogey, make sure they go in the same way. And then if it turns out the polarity is wrong another day, I can just swap them back over again. Shouldn't be too difficult. Good. There we go. So the wires for one side are ready. How's everyone doing? Subscribe to the ugly, ugly duck lady. Oh, he's undergone a transformation, has he? How nice. Right, so I'm going to twist these together. Like so. And then I'll get the helping hand back and solder those. Like that. Where's my bit of solder gone? Here it is. Solder those together. There we go. And then probably trim that down a bit because it's a bit uh, over long. Okay. And then same on the other end. Twist those together. Oh, I've not left myself as much uh, bare wire on this 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 end. It's all right. Oh, this is really good quality wire, actually. I'm glad I picked this up. And there's a hundred meters of it as well. <laughs> Mind you, if the locos like this, it's not going to go that far, is it? Because there's that much wire needed. No, I'm only kidding. Right, there you go. Plenty on there. Trim it down a bit. And we'll start putting this on the loco. And that's it. Hopefully they're not going to come apart next time I uh, solder with them. But we'll see. So what we now have is that we have a bridge between the two bogies, which I'm hoping will be long enough, and then the wires which go to the motors. And I'll need to make another one in a minute, but we'll get this one on first, just to do a bit of something different. Let's get the tabs turned to face each other then. That's it. And this one. That's it. Make sure I've not just loosened the shafts, because that would uh, not be good. I don't want these working themselves loose. Uh, so let's just tighten these. That's it. And the other one. And then we'll, I'll tin them up being careful not to let the solder get on these for too long because obviously they are connected to the plastic gears and I don't want to melt them that would not be a good start there we go so fresh solder on these joints here there we are it all looks quite fresh anyway actually yeah they should flow all right I would think Right, I'm just going to turn this round just so I've got a better view. I'm sorry, that's uh, a bit selfish. But I could prop it up so you'd see a bit better. Let's use the non-Lego brick. Let's get another one. <laughs> you see, Lego, I do still use Lego, just not in the way it's intended, probably. Okay. Let's wire these on, then. That's it, and the other one. Okay. Ah, oh, thank you very much, Zed Mark Anthony. Hello, Sam, love the stream. Currently running my sound fitted Thomas and Friends locos on my floor layout. Keep up the good work. Wow, thank you very much, sound fitted, eh? That sounds pretty cool. Nice work. Is that a custom job, or did you, or did you buy them like that? I've never heard of sound fitted ones. Uh, well, I know the Thomas uh, Backman did a Thomas with some sound effects, but that's all I was aware of. These wires are looking a bit lengthy now, aren't they? <laughs> never mind. Can't be worse than the wires that were on there to start with, can it? So I'm just going to wire one of these to start with. That's it. 
Right, and now we'll make the other side. Yeah, that's not looking too bad, is it? Plenty of wire on there, but I've still got to fit that big block on yet. Uh, in fact, will I need extra? Will I have to go over the top of it, or what? Can I go round it? Probably should have investigated this first. Now it'll be all right. That will. I hope. Now I don't know if that's supposed to go over the top. Maybe it is, but I can sort that out another time. Um, yeah, unless it can go underneath. Well, I don't. I don't really want to trap the wires. Yeah, it could go underneath. Yeah, that's not going to be an issue. Right, let's do the other side. And yes, I'm going to use the same green wire, just because I've only got green, I think. <laughs> I might have some others, but... I'll give it plenty, just in case I do have to swap. In fact, it's going to need more, actually, because the bogies are a bit further apart. So, I'm going to cut an extra large piece for this. So, the minimum length is about that, so let's give it about an inch extra. A bit more, okay. <laughs> Might as well be generous, I've got 100 metres of the stuff. Yeah, that's going to be more than long enough, isn't it, that? Right, excellent. So, let me just make sure these are tinned up. And then they're done. Doesn't really matter what order you do this in, does it? Okay. It's just slightly more uh, difficult to get to these. Okay. That's it. Right. And then we I'll do the short ones. How far away? I'm going to make these smaller pieces of wire long enough to reach either side of the motor because I'm not sure yet which way they'll need to be wired up. I haven't thought about it yet. I suppose I could try and work it out, but I'd rather just do it with trial and error. <laughs> okay, so let's strip these again. Get this ready. What was that? Oh, Kelly again. Thank you very much. It's very kind. Okay. There we go. Let's see if I can do this a little bit quicker now because you know the limbo so we can do it oh an auto oh peter again wow thank you very much some end scale trains you'll need some end scale track yes that is true i would need end scale track um i'd love to yeah after i'm sorted with o gauge that might be the next plan we'll see well i haven't uh, made any firm decisions yet but yeah i would love to try and gauge definitely we'll see Who was that? Oh, that was Peter again, was it? Yeah. Thanks, Peter and Kelly. Thank you very much. Right. There we are. This is the nice part. It's just uh, nice and easy. Can't really go wrong unless you burn your finger off with the soldering iron or something. Yeah, generally it's quite a, a relaxing section. The thing's all running nicely, working as it should. The one problem is I might not be able to run it on my bench power supply because, as I say, I've only got 300 uh, milliamps. <laughs> and it ain't going to like having two motors to run when it was struggling with just one. But we'll see. Okay, helping hand. I'll just move the chassis out of the way. It doesn't get caught in the soldering crossfire. <laughs> okay, solder that. big spool of wires getting in the way. That's like the third time I've knocked it over. So I can put that out of the way. Away with you. Okay. Let's trim a bit of that off. Yeah, it's lovely wire, dead flexible. It seems difficult to get decent DCC wire because the thin stuff seems to be dead brittle or it breaks. Uh, or if you get good quality stuff, it's dead thick and uh, it doesn't bend very easily, it's not flexible enough. This stuff seems really good. So the first time I've used it, I've had it, I must have had it nearly two years. <laughs> I just spotted it the other day while I was looking for, it might have been while I was looking for that tender actually. 
on Friday. I spotted it and I thought, hey, I'll have a look at that. Yeah, it seems like it's good stuff. Right, snip that off. Ow, it's hot. Oh, God. Flipping heck. The other didn't stay hot that long. Right, right, sorry about that. Bit of drama. Okay, so there we go. Slightly bigger one because the distance is a bit larger. And I'm always overkill when it comes to uh, cutting wire. I've always gone too far, but at least I never have to cut another length. So let's get these soldered on then. And we'll uh, see if it actually works. We'll be able to, we're probably 10 minutes away now from getting it onto the track for the first time and trying it. That is exciting. Okay, that's on. And just try not to melt the motors as I do this. It doesn't help that the soldering iron's attracted to the magnets. That's not good. Haven't melted anything, have I? No? No, don't think so. Okay, good. And then this piece can go onto the other side of the motor. And then when I apply power to the wheels, the motor should start, if I've done it properly. Right. Let's tin up the other side. Did I? Yeah, I tinned up the other one. Let's just do the same with this then. Right. So, let's put this on the track and see if it actually runs. Only one motor is going to be powered at the moment, but uh, what I can do is I can just put the other wires onto the other motor at low speed and just see if I can't produce... Uh, well, I just need to find out which way the other motor needs to be wired, basically. So, wish me luck. I don't, I don't expect it's going to run well, obviously, because some of the wheels, half of the wheels, in fact, are going to be locked up. But if everything's right and there are no short circuits and all the wheels are making connection, there's a lot of ifs, <laughs> but it should be working. So let's see, is it actually going to start on the Gauge Master controller? Yes, is the answer. I can see the motor turning. Um, it stopped again. Oh, no, no, it's going. <laughs> there we go. Yes, it's not happy because the other bogey is dead. But that should be enough. Oh, yeah, look at that. It's actually doing a great crawl on there. Um, probably too far away for you to see. But that's good. So, how am I going to do this? I'm going to get some crocodile leads and actually <laughs> use the leads to wire them to the motor. Because uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to just hold them on there. So, bear with me. I need two. Uh, in fact, I've got some short ones, I think. The short ones would be good. Uh, where are they? Ah, yeah. Okay. This is going to be messy, folks, <laughs> but it should allow me to figure it out. Out of interest, did I get the polarity right? That should be forwards. No, they're backwards. <laughs> I could just fix that, couldn't I? No, I won't. Yes, I will. Yes, I will. Uh, let's do that now, then, so I don't get confused. Uh, so I'm just going to swap the polarities around, and then I've killed two birds with one stone. I've made sure it's going forwards. Right, let's just swap those, then. And then I'm doing the thing properly first time. Stop means I don't have to come and revisit it then, doesn't it? Okay. Okay. So let's whip these off. These are going around the opposite ways now then. Which might mean, if they are opposites, the other motor will need to be wired the way I did this one initially. So that, let's just tin up the iron again. I'm hoping none of these wires are going to touch the worm drives. That would be fun, wouldn't it? But once the body's on and they're in place, it should be fine, I'm thinking. Or I'm hoping, rather. Mm, that one's a bit short. Where can it go? That way. All right, let's get these positioned before I try and solder it. I'm glad now that I left enough uh, length on the wires to go both ways. That's it. 
It's not the best soldering job. I'm not bothered with any heat shrink or anything. Come on. Okay, there we go. So that should be wired forwards now, or it should be now the same polarity. Uh, what are you most scared of, says Kelly? I don't know. It's a good question. <laughs> Not, not a lot of stuff scares me, really. I'm not right frightened of spiders or clowns or movies or anything like that. I suppose video games scare me the most. Not scary ones. What did I play last? Um, I've forgotten now. Well, um, I've forgotten now what it was that I played. But there was a scary one. Anyway. So I'm going to wire them up the way I think might be right. And we'll find out for sure whether that proves true. So this is just a test to see which way the second motor needs to be wired up to make sure it goes the right way. Okay, let's try. Right, I think that's opposite. Yeah, that seems to be going the wrong way now. So let's swap them, see if this is any better. So they both need to go to opposite sides. That's a bit strange and annoying. Here we are. Let's see if this is better. Let's just hold the wires up out of the way. Oh yeah, that's that's it. Core. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to find out how much power this thing's got. Okay, so I know what I'm doing now. So let's get those wires on, and then we could try it. I could even put the body back on. How about that? See how it goes. Well, both motors are working on the track. That's a good sign. Let's get them wired in then. Okay, this is working well. Ah, this has been such a good project. I've enjoyed this one immensely. This is the best one I've done, I think. Let's just hope it's a good runner. I seem to be turning the controller up quite a long way before the, both the motors would start. <laughs> I'm not surprised, the size of the motors. Right. So this one goes over here. There we are. This one can go under it because it's a bit shorter. Over to there. And that, folks, should be that. Hopefully that will now work. I'll put that on the track. <laughs> Moment of truth. I mean, I sort of have just tried it, but now that it's under its own steam without any crocodile clips involved, they should both now be wired in the correct direction. I don't expect this to be a crawler, by the way. <laughs> I think there's just too much machinery to go around slowly, but let's try it. Here we go, forwards. I'll tell you what, it's not that noisy, is it? It's good and quiet. And it's all-wheel drive. That's 50% speed there, so it's not a dreadfully fast machine by any means. But they do appear to be running at similar speeds, the two sides. That's good. Let's go faster. That's full speed. It's actually quite nicely geared, isn't it, actually? It's not going too fast. I think that's a good speed, about 70 see if it crawls. Yeah, as expected, I don't think it's going to do a great crawl. I mean, it is hard because one, one motor stalls and the other one starts, and then that stalls because it's having to do too much work. So it's about that speed, that's about as slow as I'm getting out of this one. That's not bad, that's not bad at all. Let's go the other way. I'll probably let it run in for a bit actually, see if it gets any better. Oh, look at that. What a big machine. It's good and smooth, though, must be said. That's plenty smooth enough, isn't it, that? And as you can see, it's going over the points nicely. Don't you dare stop now I've said that. No, nope. it's getting over the points beautifully. Brilliant. What a piece of engineering that is. I could sit and watch that all day. 
but I won't for, you, for the sanity of you lot. So let's have a go at putting this back together and uh, see how it looks with that nice clean new body on. Well, it's not new, but uh, it's newly cleaned, that's what I meant. Oh, how exciting, that's brilliant. Thank goodness for that. Um, what's the worst nightmare you've ever had? Uh, I don't know. I used to have like a, a recurring nightmare when I was younger that um, some weird creature used to like appear on the, one of my pieces of furniture. It was like a lucid dream type thing where I was sort of aware. <laughs> it was weird, yeah. I used to say weird stuff. And it used to happen quite a lot. Or at least you, you, sometimes you feel like you've had a dream multiple times when you might not have done interesting anyway let's try and put this on then see if it's actually going to go on properly i don't know which way it needs to go on that way should be fine let's put this wire over the top of it there we go the other one's gone around the side uh, which is fine um, if the body doesn't go on i'll have to trap that underneath but we'll see okay make sure the gears aren't touching any of the wiring, which they're not. Well, sort of not. Yeah, that's fine, I should think. Right, the other thing is, the body screw is a bit rusty, and uh, I realised that that would do my head in if it was <laughs> all rusty looking when I'd just cleaned the rest of it. So I'm just going to briefly shine up the top of that. Uh, it probably will look a bit more conspicuous than it would if it was rusty, but I'd just rather the top not look rusty so let's do that as one final little effort to make this thing look good there we go so that's my OCD satisfied now it's still a rusty screw don't get me wrong but the part that you will see is no longer rusty so that's good right so, which way does the body go on? That's the next question. Is it symmetrical or does it have a preference? Let's just try it, shall I? Make sure the wires are tucked out of the way. I don't know if that wire is going to be in the way now. Oh no, perhaps not. Okay, well the body's gone on. Will the screw go in? Let's see. What was that one? Kelly, we all get scared of something sometimes. Yes, that's true, Kelly. Yes, nobody's infallible. Right, well, it's screwed on. That's good. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not convinced by that. <laughs> they seem to be a little bit tight now, which suggests that that wire is being caught. Yeah. So let's put it under the weight and see if that's any better. Like that. Oops, <laughs> it's falling off. Oh, that's great, yeah, that's better. There's actually a little gap underneath the weight, which means that if you trap wires under it, when you put the body on, they won't just get sandwiched. So I think that's what I want. I've now got some wires that are a bit too close to, for comfort to those gears. Yeah, still a bit too close. Just want to make sure I don't have any problems. I mean, I'm going to be rewiring it again probably when I put the lights in, but um, need to get it working now. And then the lights can wait for another day. Well, that won't take long. Okay, I think we should be good there. Right, try again. Let's just knock that screw out. There we go. Body on. Let's pop the screw in, and then I can test and make sure everything is nice and free. Then we'll give it its first proper go with the body on. There we are. It's all together. Yep, bogies are a bit freer now, as you can see. They should take some curves now, anyway. <laughs> Wow, that thing. To think there's so much inside what is quite a small body. Unbelievable. I don't know how I'd test the pulling power, by the way, because, oh yeah, I could, yeah, I could. We'll try that then. All right, let's get it on the track properly. How's that? We'll have to try it on some curves. 
Hmm. One of the uh, bokeh bases isn't sitting very flush. That's odd. Hmm. I'll have to take a look at that. I don't think it's going to affect the performance though, so we can go ahead and try it. Right, does it work now that the body's on? Yes. Ooh, and it sounds nice as well. I don't know if you can hear that. Oh, <laughs> I think one of the motors might have stopped. Hmm. Yes, I think one of the motors has stopped. Well, it worked well for a, a second <laughs> or five. Let's have a look. Is it my dodgy wiring or has something more sinister happened? Let's see. I know one of one of the motors is running slightly better than the other one, which is strange, but uh, let's have a look. It's times like this when I wish my bench power supply had a bit more grunt to it. Right. What's the matter? Let's take it and have a look without the body on. Yeah, that's weird. Let's try again. Yeah, I'm not 100% happy with the way these um, sort of bogey outer casings sit. One of them does look a bit on the wonk, but I don't know why it would be. Anyway, let's try again. I hope this isn't going to be one of those infuriating scenarios where it works fine with the body off, but not with on. That would be annoying. Right, which motor is not working right? The one at the back. Okay, let's have a look then. Is this the one? Oh, weirdly, that's the one that was the best runner. Okay, not too bad then. So why not? Oops. Oh, that weight. Let me move the weight out of the way. Don't need that. Uh, right, you're not sorry. You're not being able to see this very well. So it's this one here, the one I did first time on Friday, uh, which, as I say, was the best of the two runners, which is annoying. So let's try again. See if we can't just uh, kick it back into life. Yes, it's not moving anywhere. The other one's running well. But this one's completely dead, which is really strange. Ah, I wonder if it could be the brush. Let's uh, push one of those brushes in. If not, I'll have to just... Yeah, let's have a go. Let me just whip the wires off. Oh, that's so annoying. But very typical. It happens all the time. <laughs> right. So let me just whip off the uh, the wires so that the uh, power supply is not trying to run both units. Let's whip that one off. There we go. And the other one. And let's power it directly and see if we can't figure out what's going on. Watch it work now. That's going to be annoying. Unless this one is drawing too much current. Maybe. Let's give it some power. Yeah, no, it's not going anywhere. But the motor's not actually getting anything, I don't think. So, let me just push these brushes in a bit. Yeah, it's the brush. I knew it. So, have I got the brushes mixed up? I don't know why it is, British models don't do it, but you've got a different brush in each socket on a different holder. And I did consider that I might have got them wrong. So let me just knock them out and swap them over. Because I'm wondering now if that's why they're not making the right contact. It's going to be awkward to get these out. But I don't want the whole thing to fall to bits. Or take it to bits, rather. Yeah, they're coming. They're coming. I've got one, I think. Sorry about this, folks. This is a bit tedious. There we are. Got one out. 
drop that down. Uh, the other one is not so free. But I'm going to get it. You mark my words. Let's try knocking it again. I haven't got anything to knock it against, unfortunately. Is it coming? Nearly. Come on now, little brush. <laughs> it's so close to coming out that I just can't quite grab it. Oh, it's coming. Is it? Yeah, it's coming, slowly. <laughs> Sorry, you can't see this very well. I'm hoping though that this will solve the problem. I might just be able to grab that. Yep, ah, thank goodness. Right, let's put the other one in there then. I bet you that's the problem. If a mouse squeaked at you, how would you react? Um, I suppose my knee-jerk reaction would be to stamp. <laughs> it depends if it was a pet mouse or not. Sorry, that was a bit uh, cruel, wasn't it? <laughs> Sorry. Right, yeah, I, I bet you money that was the problem. I bet that's why, because when I put it together last time, I don't know if you remember, um, the brushes weren't making the right contact. I bet that's why. Just get the other one in. It's not helping that the gear's in the way. Hmm. Oh, please don't tell me I've got to take that gear off just to get the brush in. I got the one out all right. Yeah, let's just whip it off. It won't take long. At least there's nothing serious the matter with it. Even though it's really super annoying, at least it's something that I can isolate and fix rather than me scratching my head wondering what on earth's wrong with it. And it still could be that, <laughs> but I reckon, I've, I reckon that's right. I reckon I've sussed it. So just take that gear out. Okay, that should go in easily now. Yep. All right, so that's, that's sliding in quite easily now. So I think that was our problem, folks. At least that's what I hope. Right, let's get the spring back in. Right. I needn't have... Uh, well, I guess. I was going to say I needn't have taken the wires off, but uh, I think I needed to, really, to... Might not have figured it out if I hadn't done that. Right. Are we running again? Let's see. Yeah, okay. Good. <sighs> Sorry, folks. I think that was my mistake. But now I know this, you see, and it can go down on the servicing sheet, and I know what not to do next time. Right. So that's going to be it's going to be awkward to get this in now because the worm drive is in place. Who was that? Uh, William Town. That mechanism looks astoundingly difficult, but at least you know what you're doing. Where I wouldn't. Well. I appreciate it, William, but I think I've just pretty much proved that I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> but thank you, yeah. I uh, appreciate the support, and it certainly is quite a complicated one. Or it's complicated looking. I wouldn't say it's terribly complicated. It's all reasonably well designed so that you can get to everything. But hopefully this will work now. And faded F-R-A-G-Z. Hi Sam, are the Bankman Thomas trains worth it? Um, ooh, that's a difficult question. I mean, they're very faithful to the TV show. So if you're looking for just a really accurate looking model, then yes, I would say they're worth it. Speaking from a mechanical point of view though, um, they're not a patch on Hornby's unfortunately. Um, and several of mine have broken down as you might know. I've talked about it before. Uh, several of mine have broken down. Uh, when I used to do servicing, when I used to do it professionally and people would pay me to do it, I had a lot of them too uh, came, came in which were broken down. They had just burnt out motors. The motors are the biggest problem with them. 
Um, so yeah, they're not that worth it. I asked for why the motors burn out, I'm not too sure. I think personally, because the mechanisms are reasonably poor quality, that a lot of them don't run on proper bearings, for example, and they have an eye mechanism, which of course produces more friction, and it's not just moving eyes, don't forget, you've also got a whole host of gears which all turn to make the eye mechanism work. I just think the friction is more than it is on a normal model train, and it just burns them out. Because how, what other explanation would there be for so many burnouts? So yeah, I don't recommend them really if you're going to use them and run them often. Because uh, like I say, a lot of mine are now just useless. But not all of them. The uh, Bankman Rosie has a better mechanism. That's got uh, sort of proper bearings on the wheel set and everything. But a lot of them don't. I think Oliver, was Oliver quite a good one as well? And the, the Thomas himself isn't too bad either. But when they release them for the UK market, I might have a look and see if they've changed them at all. Might be interesting to see that. Right, oh gosh. <laughs> I forgot the controller was still turned up. Well, they both kicked into life there, so I think we're, I think we're good. Let's go again. There we go. Problem solved. Right, let's get it assembled again then. <laughs> again. How many times? Is it three times now? <laughs> yeah, it's very typical of how these projects often go, but I'm just glad it works. Right, so for the bajillionth time, let's get this weight back in place. So I'm going to sit it on top of that wire, and the other wire goes on top. So it keeps the wires away from each other. It doesn't matter really. Right. Just going to make sure the other wires aren't in each other's way. Oops, just bend these up out of the way. Ooh, who's that? Oh, I'm not seeing one come up on the chat. Oh, that's odd. Oh, Kelly Ashford. Do you like spiders tickling your nose? Um, I can't ever say I've experienced that particular phenomenon, Kelly. Uh, I don't imagine I would like it, no. I wouldn't be afraid, I don't think. Although perhaps I would, because a spider deliberately tickling my nose would be beyond the usual creepiness of spiders, wouldn't it? So I think my answer would, on consideration, be a no. I don't. But I can't say I've had it happen, like I say, so you can't take my answer as golden. Right, where's the body? What have I done with it? It's over there. Right, please, please make this the last time. I don't want to have to keep taking this body off. Try again. It's a good fitting body, I must say. It looks so much better since I cleaned it. It's one of the most satisfying things, having a f truly filthy locomotive and cleaning it off and then seeing it look good for the first time. They should, someone should set up a service for that. They just like spray cack and filth all over your models and then send them back to you and you get to clean them again. It's a good uh, activity during the current climate, isn't it? Just to fill some time. Oh, I don't know. I'd, I don't think I'd be able to make that sell. If you fancy it, you're welcome to steal the idea. Right, here we go. Try again. Ah, fantastic. Well, that's half speed. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's geared nicely. And they're both running at that speed, which suggests it's not just a motor fault, which is good. No nasty smells, no nasty noises. And the speed's there if you want it. I'll try again. Yeah, you do. You have to give it a flick to get it started, because it's that hungry. But yeah, the speed's there if you want it. Right, let's try the pulling power then. <laughs> I'm really interested to know what this thing pulls like. Oh. Was it just derailed? Oh, I think because that bogey cover is lower than it should be, I think it might have just derailed that. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know what the matter is with that. It just needs bending back into position, I think. Yeah, that's odd. Ah. Yeah, there's a like a, a metal clip that it's supposed to catch on and it's not doing it 
So I might have to try and repair that at some point. But as long as I don't go over points for the time being, it should be okay. I might have just put it on wrong. <laughs> I don't think so, but it could be that. All right, let's send it around the track once. I'm sorry that you won't be able to see this, but I just want to make sure it takes curves all right. And it seems to. Yeah, it's just gone around the second radius bit. Well, in fact, it doesn't have to go all the way around then. It's done that, so I know it'll be fine. Let's bring it back. A bit faster. Yeah, it's not a speedy loco, which I'm quite pleased about, because all that power is going into torque rather than speed, which is good. I'd love to know how much current it draws. It's complicated to measure it, though, because my track is fed from different points, so... I'll have to disconnect them in order to get all the current flowing through one wire. But I um, suppose I could do it on the rolling road. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. But it's not the rolling road, obviously. It's, it doesn't use as much energy on that because it's, it's not uh, having to move itself. We'll just see if I can get the Newton meter hooked around the coupling here. It might not fit. Well, perhaps it will. Is it going to? It might just interfere with it. We'll see. Hmm. It may work. Is it going to? Yeah, it may give us an idea. Let's try. No, perhaps not. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, I think the meters, the hook's too big and it's touching the track, but we'll try it. Forwards we go. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, right, it's not happy. But it's just pulled us up to over 0.7 newtons. Uh, off the top of my head, I'm not sure how much that is <laughs> in terms of coaches. But that is powerful. That is a powerful beastie. So, wow, it works quite well as well. Let's put it on the other way and give it one more run. I'm really pleased with that. That is such a good runner. And it was worth it, I would say. It was worth all the hard work. Look at that. It's nice and slow. Speed it up. Yeah, it's just it's a really good range of speeds. I mean, the half speed is probably quite realistic, isn't it? That, and then you can run, crank it up if you want to. Yeah, it's really, really good. Let's do. Um, let's just do a quick test on the rolling road then. See how much current it actually draws. Although obviously that's not going to be the same as what it draws when it's got a load of coaches or whatever. It's going to be a lot more. But uh, yeah, without much of a load, let's find out how much it actually draws. So let me grab the rolling road. We want four rollers. I've got three there. Where's the other one? Okay. So that's that. I've got my crocodile clips. So let's pop the road there. There we go. Let's grab one of the meters. It uh, doesn't matter which. This cheap orange one will do it. So, guesses, how much current do you think it's going to draw? I reckon 600 milliamps. That's going to be my guess. Could be more, could be less. Bear in mind, it's not going to be under much load here. It's not actually going to be propelling itself along. Uh, right, this is going to be awkward. I always struggle to get locos on the rolling road. But we'll try. I just, I'm so glad this one works. Because when I first looked at it, I thought, oh my goodness, that looks like a, a right old job to fix that one. And here we are, and the thing's actually running. It's quite a, quite an occasion. Right, I think we're almost there. Yeah, I think we're on. Okay. Right, I've got some leads here coming from the middle line, so if I use those, uh, that one can go direct. That one can go to the meter, and this one can go from the meter onto the rolling road. And then I'll try and put the meter somewhere where you guys can see it. Okay, you see that? Hopefully. Well, if you can't read the numbers, if it's too small, I'll read them out. But here we go. Hmm not actually going anywhere 
Have I not got this on right? Yeah, does it not like the rolling road? Maybe it doesn't. Well, it's going. Right. Hey, look at that. 0 0.4 amps. 450 milliamps. That's really low. That's only just over 200 milliamps per motor. Or 225. That seems, that seems not very much. Well, it's climbing a bit. Oh, no, it's not. Let's go. What's it on full speed? Oh, that's a bit more like it. <laughs> 0.8 amps. We're seeing 800 milliamps there. Max. So that's about 400 per motor. That's quite a lot. But at half speed, it's quite mild. 0.44. Yeah, that's not going to blow your controller, is it? You won't be able to run it on one of the Hornby ones. But if you've got a controller rated for one amp, this is plenty below that. That's really good. Doesn't seem to like the rolling road very much. And obviously if I started putting some coaches behind it or something, no doubt it would draw more. But yeah. An amp is plenty to run it. Oh, that's good. Wow. And that's at full speed. It seems to be nearly half that at half speed, um, which is unusual. Wouldn't normally expect the current to double like that, but I guess it did. Right, what do people think to that then? What do you reckon? It is a right old beast, isn't it, that one? Amazing. Right, well, that's it. It's now a member of the fleet. I can now run it in videos and such, and I will at some point take a look at that bogey, see if I can't make sure the casing fits on it properly. Let me show you what I mean. Can you see that? Yeah, it's just a bit too low on this end, and I think there's a catch that just that's supposed to hold it up like that, and it's not working right. So, might need a minor repair on that. But um, yeah, most part, it's absolutely fine. So there we go, the Model Barn Electric restored and working at last, possibly for the first time in 30 odd years, and it's looking good. I think it looks, you know, I think it looks pretty decent. Okay, folks, well, I think that will just about do it. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. That was a thoroughly entertaining little project. Uh, easily the best I've ever attempted. Um, not for my work on it. I mean, just for the actual model itself. Uh, yeah, man, I was not expecting to find a dual motor set up when I took the body off, but uh, it's been a great challenge. It's been a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed seeing it. Um, like I say, there are some more models, uh, you, you'll know which ones if you saw yesterday's video of my uh, oft, uh, loft finds. Uh, not my loft, but um, yes, they belong to me, that's what I meant. So we'll do some more at some point, we'll see how it goes. Uh, let's do some more shout outs before I go. CJ Trains is saying bye. Uh, Rebecca Watson, Sam do you have any pets? I had two guinea pigs but sadly one of them died. Oh, I'm sorry to hear about that. Uh, yeah, we've still got Buddy. We've got our little hamster Buddy. You can see him on Instagram if you like. <laughs> oh, the express engine just got here. Um, well, not to worry. I'm hoping to do another on Friday. And then I've got a video tomorrow. Uh, so it's only going to be Thursday. I'm not going to be on here. Uh, so we'll see. Right, food, says the Ugly Duck Man. Okay, enjoy whatever you have. Hope you enjoy it. That was awesome, says CG Great Western Railway. Thank you. It was. It was an awesome model. What a thing. What a thing. Okay, folks, well, thank you so much for coming. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you're all staying safe, of course. Uh, look after yourselves. Hope you enjoy the video that's going up tomorrow. Um, members, you'll get it tonight, so look out for that. Once again, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and uh, let's hope this thing runs for many years. I'm sure it will. I'm sure it won't bro break down as soon as I try it off camera. But we'll see. We'll see. All right, folks, you take care. I'll see you very soon. Mm -hmm.